casual with it. Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. We are live at Sprouts. I'll show you uh, Sprouts right there. And going in to do some grocery shopping, we are mainly going to focus on produce. And I am here with Aslan, Rebirth member, Lynn. Hey. Lynn is a, a member of the Rebirth Experience and um, she lives local here in Atlanta. And so while I'm still here, hi, how are you? While I'm still here, we decided to come to the grocery store together. Um, as you guys know, I'll be in Columbia in a few weeks where everything looks different, but I wanted to show the produce um, here in America and how to pick it, how to store it, all that good stuff. So I'm going to rotate the camera around as well so you can see everything in here. This is Sprouts, where it looks so pretty. I feel like it makes the experience so much better. So we're just going to flow naturally. Um, Ashley, you, you can, we can, well, let's start over here. Let's just start where you are with the apples. So for me, with the apples, it really doesn't matter. You just, apples are always right, but I just look for the ones that are unblemished. Now with the pears, um, these pears right here, they're already ripe and ready to eat. You can tell by the brown spots. You actually want them to be brown like this. But if you buy them and they're, even this, see, feel this, how it's hard. So I would let this sit on my counter for a day or two until it softens a little bit and then transfer to the fridge. And that's a general rule with all of the produce that you purchase that's not yet ripened because um, here in America, they pick our produce before it's really ripe so that they have time to transfer, transport it because nothing you know, grows where you are, which is why if you can find a local outdoor farmer's market, that is the best place because that food travels like from someone's yard to the market that day. Whereas the things in the grocery store, you know, product, this is a product of Argentina. So imagine how long it's been since this was picked yeah. from the tree, right? So it, the, it, the nutrients are not quite as good as if you can get things local, but you can't get pears local. So I'm not telling anybody not to eat them. I'm just saying, keep that in mind. So these would be, most of these would be right and ready to go. You just wanted to have a little bit of give and then you would store it directly in your refrigerator if it's already ripened. If it's not ripened, put it on the counter. As for the apples, uh, your apples can go straight in the fridge or you can keep them on the counter, but typically they will last longer on the, in the refrigerator. So, and the red pears, I mean, I, I typically stick with the Bartlett's or sweeter. If you like pears, I tend to use pears mostly in my smoothies. Anyway, um, that's, that's the main thing I do. Let's talk about avocados, because this is a big one. This is a big one and avocados are expensive. Sorry for the camera shaking. Um, avocados can be expensive. This is a, this is a nice one. And the, the price, two for three, is expensive. <laughs> I think these are in season right now. Don't quote me because I might be wrong, but this, this is expensive. So you may be able to find these cheaper at an Aldi if you have an Aldi near you. Um, but it's also big. This is a very big avocado. Now, at Aldi, they were like 89 cents each a couple days ago. So that's what I'm saying. $1. fifty for one uh, is a lot. Now, in terms of picking them, feel this one. That's still a little, a little. It's, it's still firm, okay? Uh, but it's starting to have a little bit of give. When it feels like this, I would keep it on the counter for like another day or so and then check it. So it can be, it can be a little time consuming if you're not uh, used to being intentional with your food to say, I got to remember to check my pears. Or, but I would just say every day, lay your hands on your produce that's on the counter. And, and because once these start to get super soft, let me see if I can find one that's, oh no, see like this is too far gone. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's too far gone. You can tell that. The other thing is, it's true what that video said. When you see this inside part here, this one doesn't look as bad as it should, but most of the time it'll be very dark in there. That's not a good avocado. So I, they don't want you to do this, but because they're so expensive, I will pull that out and I will pull that piece out in a heartbeat and look at it. See if I can find an example. Um, but 
works. It depends on what you're using them for. If you want to use it the same day, then you'd want to search for one that's a little softer. Like these are, these are all gone. This one, that's that's gonna be good tomorrow. It's a little bit softer. And that piece still in there. Yeah, yeah. But if we took that out, let's just do one. I'm just gonna do just one. Look at that. See, oh, okay. it's nice and green. Okay. So this is a this is a perfect avocado right here. All right. I'm look. I I managed to get it back down in there. I don't wanna. I don't want anybody to be, because um, people are starting to do that more. You can tell because you'll pick them up. And there's nothing wrong with it. If you buy one and that little piece is not in there, it's fine. It, mainly you're going by how it feels. Um, so for me, the perfect same day avocado would be not rock hard, but not crazy mushy like that one was up there. It's hard to find them in the store same day use. So the best thing to do with avocados is plan ahead. Buy a few. Uh, keep them on your counter. Once they start to soften, one day beyond how that one felt, like put them in the fridge immediately and you can buy yourself a little more time. Most people, they're losing their avocados because uh, they don't realize that they need to start on the counter and then put them in the fridge. If you put a rock hard avocado in the refrigerator as soon as you buy it, it's never gonna ripen properly. Please don't do that. I've, I've messed that up. And these, they're too expensive. They're just way too expensive to, um, to, to do that and then now it's useless they, they never soften and so the taste is not as good or anything yeah mm -mm. so that's I think I think that's the biggest the biggest issue we have is with our avocados all right and uh, let's see here and then here they have the organic ones as well and I mean, these are these are rock hard. Now, let's talk about organics. I wouldn't buy an organic avocado. I'm not gonna spend more on that. Although these are the same price. Notice they're also two for three, but they're a lot smaller. Um, the, 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 the skin is thick, that's why. And now if you can afford it, you should definitely buy 100% organic everything. But if not, then a general rule of thumb is anything that has a thin skin, the pesticides and stuff that's sprayed on it can get inside the fruit more. Or anything you're going to eat the peel of, you may wanna consider buying the organic version. Um, but things like even squash, I don't buy organic. Tomatoes, I definitely always look for organic. Um, organic cucumbers. And you can look up a list called the, the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, and those give you the top produce that you should seek to do organic. But the, my tops are um, cucumbers, tomatoes, any type of berries, because um, berries are very porous. Everything that's sprayed on goes directly in there. Those can be hard, man, because organic strawberries are not cheap. So it, it, if you can't do 100% all the time, it's, it's, it's not like you're gonna like eat the fruit and die right away. You know what I'm saying? Like the surf and toe Eve. It won't be like that. It's just be mindful of it. You can't, you, you wouldn't want to eat that every day because you are taking in not just the food itself, but the pesticides that were on it. So, yeah. So for the, for the um, cucumbers, I just make sure those are firm. Now look, you guys, here's a different avocado, the Haas, smaller, cheaper, 99 cents. So it's up to you. Um, what you do with those. In terms of your tomatoes, just make sure they're firm and not mushy to the touch and never ever refrigerate your tomatoes. I'm gonna turn this camera to say that again. Don't put your tomatoes in the refrigerator. It turns the texture mealy on the inside. You may not have even realized that you're eating them and they're not, they just don't taste as good. You refrigerate it after it's already uh, been cut into but before that, it can stay on the counter. If it gets too mushy to put in a salad, blend it up into a salad dressing. So take a little tomato and add um, uh, like some bell pepper with it. You could do a red bell pepper, any color bell pepper you want. I wouldn't do green, but uh, a colored bell pepper, a little bit of onion or a little bit of shallot. Um, you could add a little oil. If you, if you want to reduce your oil, you could skip the oil instead. You could even add like a small piece of avocado to give it the fat and creaminess and uh, a little salt and you got a salad dressing. 
and that's a, a, or you can blend them into sauce and add a little tomato paste with it and make a red sauce. That way you're not wasting your tomato because they, they can go really fast. And I, a lot of them have died in my house. But if you can make it into a sauce like that, then you could toss it with pasta or over veggies or make a dressing or something like that to um, extend the life of your food. All right, so um, Lynn has grocery shopping to do as well. I don't want to slow her down on that. Was there other produce you had a specific that you struggle with? So the, yeah, the peaches, peaches should be should be on the firm side too. For the most part, I look to get my food firm. So the kiwi, you want to be firm, but again, don't refrigerate it because you you stop the ripening process when you do that. So don't refrigerate your kiwi. Let them sit on the counter for a while until they soften some, and then transfer them to the refrigerator, or they'll never fully they'll never they'll never fully ripen. Um, peaches, I think they have some here. So if you live in Georgia. You should be getting your peaches from a local farmer's market. Don't buy them in the grocery store because they grow here. So um, one market that I recommend is the Grant Park Farmer's Market on Sundays. I really love it. But there's also a farmer's market um, down on Ponce and Midtown. I think they're on Tuesdays. Um, and if, you're, if you use social media and you go on Facebook, you can find the outdoor farmer's markets that happen every day of the week pretty much this time of year and the peaches are the bomb they have nothing on these store-bought peaches oh the other advantage of getting it at the market like that is that they'll tell you what level of ripeness it is this will be ripe in two days this and that they'll give you an explanation um, and even let you sample the fruit which you can't do in the grocery store so <clears throat> during peach season definitely recommend getting those in abundance and um, putting them in smoothies, make yourself a little a little cobbler. Like, that's my favorite. And I'm gonna miss some peaches when I'm in Medellin, cause that's, I have not seen that there at all. I don't think it grows there. And I don't want it if it's imported, cause yeah. how long would it take to get there? Oh, you wanna talk about mangoes? Yeah, and asparagus. Okay, well let's look, let's look at the uh, asparagus first. So, uh, the main thing with the as with the asparagus is you want the tips to still be dry like this if there's any moisture there they're already starting to go bad but most of the time in the grocery store this is how they look I just I store mine in the fridge just like this but you should use your asparagus within a day or two of buying them <laughs> you just got are you gonna take that one okay well I didn't know that was the best one hold on okay we can Hold on. That's why I'm, I'm, I stay in the grocery store for a long time. I think this one looks better. So looking at how green. Yeah. Th see the darker pieces there? Yeah. I don't, I'm not happy with that. I feel they're already expensive. Mm -hmm. And so I want every one to look really good. And these just, it just looks fresher to me on the tips. The tips go bad first. Okay. So that one. See if I you want to show everybody that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look at the tips there of the one that we picked. And, and it's dry. There's, they don't look wet. They'll start to look uh, slick when they when they start going bad. But this one looks pretty good. And a lot of times, also, they're thicker than this. These are very thin. I don't know why. There's nothing wrong with them, but they are thin. So the price of these is uh, $1.98 a pound. Um, but these these do look pretty good. I think you're I think you're okay with that one. Okay. The other reason why that one, it also looks like it's a little more in there, but it's per pound, so it doesn't really matter. But see, some of, I just always look at the tips. This one right here, see how that looks on the tip, mm -hmm. tips there? So if you see here up close, I don't know if you can see that, but these tips look like they're already dying. Now, I do think you, you could probably store this standing up in water in the refrigerator if you weren't going to use it right away. I have not tried that, but it could work. Um, my suggestion though would be to use them as soon as possible. They got the tomatoes on the vine. This is actually my favorite kind. I don't have a reason why. Romas are good too, but I do like these clustered tomatoes on the vine. Let's go over here and check out the mangoes. All right, so their mangoes, the pineapples are two for three. That's not bad, but I wish they were 99 cents. 
All right, so they have these these red mangoes. Very hard. This is the same rule. Feel how hard that is? It's not ready. So you buy this and you leave it on the counter. This is probably about two or three days away from being ready. This is why sometimes people will eat the fruit and say it's not sweet because it's not. It was it was picked before it was ripe. Um, and then the these yellow mangoes. These, I, I think these ripen a little faster. I'm not a fan of these, but I don't have a real reason why. They're small too, so it's 10 cent difference and it's much smaller. Um, but the same principle applies. If you see them and they're, they're already getting some dark spots on them, like this, uh, th this is closer to being ripe. And some people will smell the fruit and see if they smell the sweetness. And you can you can tell that it's not sweet at all. Yeah. Yeah, so, but it, it, it will get sweet, but it's not sweet yet. So, uh, my favorite mango is called the Haitian mango. It's hard to find, but if you ever see it anywhere, buy a case immediately. So I heard people bragging about it. I'm not, I didn't grow up eating mangoes. This is like a new thing for me since becoming an adult. So I'm not mango crazy like other people are. I do, I do like them though. Uh, more now, but it took me a while. The texture was it's kind of slimy. Yeah. I hate to use that word because it's fruit and it is good, but that took me a minute to get over. Um, but the Haitian mangoes, it's like next level sweetness. It tastes almost like it's got vanilla extract on it. I mean, I don't really know how to describe it, but it definitely it it make it makes this mango seem flavorless. That's just how good Whoa. the um, Haitian mangoes are. Now this one's a little closer to being right. Squeeze it. Okay, I got a little giving. Yeah, it's giving a little bit, so you can tell. So this is probably like tomorrow. Oh, some parts, but then some of this, that's already going bad. And it could be from a lot of people pushing it, mm -hmm. pushing in on it, but it's got an indentation there, so I wouldn't buy that one. This stuff is not cheap, so we want it to be absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Let me show you guys these plantains as well while we're in here, because these plantains, they're starchy, uh, but it's better than a candy bar and it make it can make a great snack so they start off very green and then as they get yellow like this you can uh, saute them you can do a plantain mash I just saw that on a cooking show yesterday and I'm gonna give that a try but uh, which would be boiling these in the skin uh, and then like I already have an idea of how they did it but you would boil it and you could boil it in the skin with just a little cut in there uh, and then take it out and mash it like with some coconut milk and some seasonings and that would give you a nice starchy type side. Yeah. Um, if you eat them green, it's a better form of resistant starch and it's better for your gut. But you could do the, you could do the yellow too. So yeah, so again, to ripen your mangoes, just leave them on the counter. They should ripen better with the warmer season right now. Just leave them on the counter for maybe two days or so. Every morning when you wake up and you go in the kitchen to do your uh, breakfast and stuff just touch your fruit just lay hands on it and see how it feels and if it's soft whether it's your avocado or your mango or whatever go ahead and drop it in the refrigerator so that it doesn't spoil because it, if it sits there even another day it could be too far gone you won't be able to use it all right and then now I will tell you all right up front I'm not the best at picking melons but I have found that uh, the honeydew right here there's honeydew melons and um, these Gaia melons, most of the time, these are all sweet when you get them. Um, I haven't found that they are, you know, you have a problem with that. Watermelon, whole nother story. For one thing, seeded watermelon is so hard to find. Have you seen those anywhere yet? Yeah. I, I Watermelon, is, I follow all the rules, y'all. The rules tell you that if it has, you know, light patches on the bottom, uh, and, and the webbing or whatever, that means it laid directly on the ground is sweeter. I haven't found it. And my next step is, there was a guy selling watermelon for those here in Atlanta, right on Wesley Chapel. But he wanted $10 for these seeded watermelons. I mean, they were big, but I was like, I'm not ready for that. Uh, and then there's no guarantees. If, I, if I've spent $10 and it's not sweet, I'm gonna be hot. Yeah. So. Okay, so, well, yes, let's talk about pineapple. So, yeah, so with the watermelon, it, it really, I feel, can be hit or miss. But you could try that. You could look for the 
light patches on the bottom and the webbing and see if that's going to be good but definitely um, tr always try to get your fruit seeded as much as possible if you can't I'm not judging you that's what I don't think the, se the seedless even taste that sweet though to me they don't really taste good either so let's talk about pineapples <clears throat> this pineapple is 100% not ripe at all at all so if you buy this this is gonna sit on your counter for as much as, as long as a week, possibly. It's nowhere near ready. Um, if you see them like this, now we're cooking with grease, because it's less green and more yellow. Okay. Okay, see it's starting to get yellow. I wouldn't say it's 100%, but I'll tell you this, when a pineapple is ready, you can smell it. Okay. And, 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 and when you can smell it just a little bit, Cut it open and, and deal with it then or put it, it. Yeah, you can't smell anything. Or uh, throw it in your refrigerator until you're ready to deal because it'll go downhill fast. Uh, the best way to, I cut these, I cut each end off and then I stand it back up and cut down all along each side. And there you have it. Um, and I've used the core before, but I know it's hard, so some people don't. I've used it like um, in a smoothie or something. And then they sell those special tools if you want to go in and take it out. But yeah, none of these pineapples is ready. Sometimes sprouts will have them for 99 cents, but today they're not. All right, you got your asparagus. What else are you getting? Okay. Yeah, they have a ton of melons here, but then my concern is, are these melons real? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Are these, are these hybrid melons? Where did all this new stuff come from? Hi, how are you? Oops. I accidentally pressed a button. I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay. Uh, of course, you know how everybody knows bananas, right? I mean, you get them green till they turn yellow. That's an easier one. Grapes, about the same. So the nectarines that are over here, it, it, it's really the same concept for all of them. If they're super, super firm, they need time on the counter to ripen. Once they start to feel softer, transfer them to the refrigerator. I, I do the same thing with all. Uh, with, with the peaches, see, it's, it's rock hard, but this look, but it's, it's, it's pretty. This is a good looking peach, so I would buy it. Now with your strawberry, like strawberries, blackberries, and blueberries, are you just gonna hit and miss with those? It's all in how they look. It's just that they, if they look wet, you know, like they're, that's what happens when they first start to go bad. You see that moisture inside the container okay. or they're blemished, then I don't get them. Okay. And they, they, they can be, it's hard. And especially because you pay so much for them and then you have to take the whole package. So, hey, if you can do strawberry picking at a farm, then you'd be even, you'd be in even better shape. Okay. It's like this Driscoll's but there's one in there right there on the side that's gone bad so if the rest of the container looked okay then i might get it the other thing is some of them um sometimes the fruit is not bad where you can't eat it, it just doesn't look good anymore so if, it, if that doesn't offend you if there's no mold on it you could just trim the top and use it in smoothies like transfer it to the freezer if you, if you see your strawberries going to a place where you wouldn't want to just pop one in your mouth but they're not moldy yet you could just wash them, trim the tops, and transfer them to a Ziploc bag to put in smoothies. And that would be the best way to conserve. You could freeze the raspberries and blueberries and stuff too. And, and your blackberries. But berries are excellent for you. It's really the best, the best fruit that you can eat is berries. And that's why I like to buy the big bag of the frozen mixed berries and... Um, uh, and use those in my smoothies and stuff all the time. They're highly nutritious, full of antioxidants, help boost your immune system, keep you from getting sick. Um, they're, they're lower in uh, even natural sugars for people who need to do low sugar for a while, if they're doing a parasite cleanse or just in general trying to get their numbers down, um, then berries are perfect. It's really like the perfect fruit. And I would say apples too, but there's a, apples are high in fiber, especially with the, um, when, when you eat them with the peel on. So for people who are struggling with constipation and stuff like that, it's great to eat a couple apples a day. Just, I, I tend to eat a lot of apples. If I'm cleansing or doing anything like that, I may chop up three apples in a bowl together. And the other thing about doing that, like eating just a massive amount of fruit or 
three or four apples at the same time or uh, some people will do this with mangoes something called mono meals where you just overdose on one fruit is it helps to break this mindset of portion control we all have we're just so used to thinking I shouldn't eat a lot of whatever that we apply it to healthy foods too if you're eating a salad and you got a good homemade dressing on it you should eat a huge amount why you know so there's a there is a such thing as good binging we can binge in a in a uh, positive way all right so I'm gonna let you get oh, unless you have did I miss anything in here that you wanted to cover Yeah, so you already know with the with the, like things like potatoes. Um, one thing on potatoes is that I am in the middle of researching and experimenting with using colored potatoes again. Uh, I don't I don't think the white potatoes have the same amount of nutritional benefit, and I do think they could cause you to have, you know, maybe more carb cravings. But you'd have to see how your body feels. But um, red potatoes, the purple potatoes, purple potatoes especially, are supposed to be great at disease fighting. So, and they're really good. Just plain oven roasted or um, you, could, you could boil them and do a mash. So, um, and, and I, would, I would say do some sweet potatoes every now and then, especially if you are in need of a treat. You know, you need a little something. Roast a whole sweet potato in the oven. Just poke a couple, wash it, poke a couple holes in it. Throw it in the oven for 30, 45 minutes till it's soft, and then you could put a little, sprinkle some coconut sugar in there, um, maybe a dab of Earth Balance or a dab of coconut oil in there, and enjoy that with a salad. You know. And with onions, I think this one looks a lot prettier to me. So. Yeah, onions are fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I do too. Uh huh. And I like red onions. Okay. That's the personal thing because red onions to me are great raw in a salad. They're great in like a um, with uh, avocado or something, and then also um, they're delicious sautéed. Like if you're going to add them to a veggie burger or anything like. To me, white onions don't have that much versatility, um, except maybe the Vidalia has a little more sweetness. If you were mixing it like with some turnip greens or something, then I think those would those would caramelize well. But for me, the red onion does everything. I'm like addicted to it. I love it. <laughs> So I put it in, in, in everything. Yeah. So, okay, so we're gonna finish up our grocery shopping here. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, feel free to leave a comment if you have a question about something, uh, an item that I did not cover. I look forward to sharing videos uh, from Colombia with you guys in about a month. We'll be in Medellin, M-E-D-E-L-L-I-N, Colombia. And I will be doing a fruit tour and lots of grocery shopping there and sharing, you know, as much information as I possibly can with you guys um, on that end, of, from that end of the world. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. And um, if you're watching on my YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe so you can get even more tips and notifications of what I'm doing. All right. Bye.